I'd like to uh, welcome you to the National Capital Planning Commission. I'm Marcel Acosta, the Executive Director of the Commission, and I think we have a, a terrific program tonight. And actually, this is a bit of an anniversary for us. In uh, 2010, we had kicked off our speaker series uh, with the Portland, Oregon Sustainability Institute, uh, where they told us all about the eco-districts and their, what they're doing in their great city. Uh, and we had also, at that time, um, kicked off our uh, Southwest Eco District Initiative. So two years later, uh, we're very pleased to uh, bring um, uh, members back uh, from uh, the Portland, Oregon Sustainability Institute who will be moderating today's session, but also uh, to talk about some of the other initiatives uh, that are going on in this great city so and, and region. So not only are we working on uh, our Southwest Eco District, which uh, Diane Sullivan will talk to you about uh, a little later, uh, but also you'll see some great examples of uh, various eco-district initiatives right here in the district uh, and in Arlington. And one of the things that you'll find, uh, I think, through this through the series of presentations is uh, that everybody has a different way of doing an eco-district. Uh, there are different uh, assumptions that go into it. There are different conditions that they are taking into account, and there are different settings. So I think one of the interesting things that you'll find uh, with all of the presentations is that every organization uh, might be approaching it in a different way. But we all share the same objectives. Uh, we all share the same values in terms of making our nation's capital more sustainable in terms of the environment, uh, and making it economically and also socially, and also looking at sustainability at a larger scale, at a district scale, uh, where we try to achieve greater sustainability uh, that uh, where it's possible at this larger level rather than individual buildings. So I think that's what one of the distinguishing factors is uh, of the Eco District. Uh, also through this effort, we've also uh, have collaborated uh, greatly with uh, staff and stakeholders throughout the region, uh, both uh, through our federal and local partners, uh, as well as the public and private sectors. So you'll see that there are a lot of different uh, folks involved in trying to make these eco districts a reality. Um, uh, just uh, so I think you'll be impressed uh, by what you're going to hear tonight. I think they have a lot of exciting uh, uh, stories to tell, and also a lot of great examples out there. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, Marcel. So I have the pleasure of moderating and framing up the topic of eco districts for you this evening. I think the presentation should be coming up shortly. Um, so I'm Naomi Cole. I, uh, I'm with an organization called the Portland Sustainability Institute. Let's see if I can make this work. Okay. So we are just a couple seconds on sort of our backstory because I think it's important to framing up this idea of eco districts and sustainable neighborhood strategies. So we're a small nonprofit that was created several years ago in Portland to lead a shared sustainability agenda and to work between public, private, academic, and nonprofit partners toward um, a sort of shared sustainability agenda. And so we do our work through what we hope are high impact projects, and eco districts uh, is one of those projects. So to start us off, I'm going to give you a bit of the, the what, why, and how of eco-districts. Uh, and so the what is, a, is an important question. And to start with kind of a visual definition, because we've struggled with the words quite a bit, and uh, lots of folks working in this space define it a little bit differently. But um, if you're a visual thinker, hopefully this is helpful. So we are very focused on existing neighborhoods. So we start with what might look like kind of a gray street corner, um, not particularly animated, not particularly pedestrian friendly. We layer in high performance infrastructure like district energy and district water systems, high performance buildings and high performance facades. You add in multiple modes of transportation, starts to animate the street a little bit more, put people out there, make a more inviting public realm. And then you add habitat and natural infrastructure which provide ecosystem services, manage stormwater, reduce urban heat island effects, bring habitat into the city, make it a more desirable place to be. And then finally, most importantly, you add in the people and local commerce, and you get this idea of a thriving, healthy, happy neighborhood, which looks like a pretty nice place to be uh, that was really developed on, you know, what's this sort of aging, existing building and infrastructure environment. So 
uh, when it comes to words, we've defined eco-districts pretty simply. It's a neighborhood or district that's committed to improving its sustainability performance over time. And we think of the types of projects that make up an eco-district in three major buckets. So buildings, infrastructure, like light rail in the middle there, and people, and the kinds of choices that people make on a daily basis that we know have major impacts on resource consumption. So uh, for our organization, we also define eco-districts as a program that we've created. And when our organization was formed, uh, we were tasked with uh, figuring out what are eco-districts and what do they look like in the context of the city of Portland. So we spent our first year developing a program. We created a large technical advisory committee. Oops. Another button does that too. Um, we, and then we partnered, we, we, so we created this approach, the, the sort of steps for developing eco-districts. And then we recognized that we really needed to test this through a pilot program where we could refine our approach um, and capture sort of the best thinking and how you create eco-districts in Portland. And so we are now actively working with several neighborhoods to do this. We uh, have launched what we call the Eco-District Summit, which is now an annual conference that's held in Portland. And it's really the sort of international um, convening opportunity for folks working on issues of district scale sustainability. And in May, we're launching our first Eco-Districts Institute, which is a two and a half day training program for cities who have an identified Eco-District neighborhood um, to come to Portland and be trained um, by us and many of, our, uh, many of the sort of partners we work with to develop Eco-Districts. So why eco-districts? So um, the key really is about scale. Um, and that for so many reasons, the neighborhood or district scale is the right one, particularly right now, to really understand um, sort of integration of systems across buildings and infrastructure and human behavior, and to understand how we can meet the kinds of goals that cities are adopting citywide, re you know, region-wide, uh, but struggling to struggling to really meet and trying to figure out, you know, how do we actually implement these very ambitious climate goals that we now have? And so the district scale provides a manageable one to sort of innovate quickly, uh, but still have sort of meaningful and significant impact. So the, the sort of thinking from the perspective of Portland on why to create eco-districts, um, there, there are many reasons, but one is that, you know, cities, the city is made up of many existing neighborhoods, right? It's rare to have a brownfield or greenfield redevelopment opportunity. So trying to figure out how to do this in existing neighborhoods is critical. It's an implementation tool to meet citywide goals, as I mentioned. Having a pilot program really allows us to sort of innovate in these kind of innovation zones. It's a strong opportunity to build partnerships with leaders in these neighborhoods. Highly powerful brand. All of our neighborhoods really see the value in eco districts as providing a sense of identity and place. Tremendous research opportunities and partnerships with local universities. And then finally, and perhaps most significantly, many of the projects that we see in eco districts have, you know, very meaningful sort of economic returns, and there's a clear bottom line and economic case for why to do it. So how do we achieve this? This has really been the focus of our work. Uh, once we sort of did this research and developed this program. We developed what we called our eco-districts roadmap. And it really starts with kind of the vision, the sort of what and the why. This is, we produce uh, what we call our eco-districts framework that's up on our website. And from there, once you've got sort of this, this guiding program, the first step is really about organization. So organizing and aligning the city and really building capacity in the neighborhood for stakeholders to collaborate with each other in a new way and then to also work with the city towards these sort of shared sustainability outcomes. Once you've got that critical mass of stakeholders, the next step is about uh, some type of assessment. So a rigorous and thoughtful process to prioritize projects that are most appropriate for that neighborhood. And from there, we really look at policy and finance as the sort of opportunities and the tools where public and private sector can come in to support project implementation, which is really where we all want to be, right? We want to see the kinds of projects that make these neighborhoods great. And here we've got them grouped in, in two major buckets, so buildings and infrastructure. So things like district energy, building retrofits, smart grid, green streets, we understand that relatively well. Um, and then on the other side, people and behavior, which um, I, I'm afraid we don't understand as well. This is all the sort of complex factors and indicators that inform the kinds of choices that uh, people make, right? So neighbors, developers, um, the way we sort of inhabit our neighborhoods and inhabit our buildings. So the programs we see here are things like training and education, social marketing, demand management around energy and water and waste. And so based on that roadmap, we created a five-step process to work with these pilot neighborhoods. So I talked a little bit about district organization. This is really about building capacity and creating what we've suggested are new governance structures in these neighborhoods. So 
public and private partnerships to drive towards these new shared eco-district goals. The assessment process includes baselining performance in order to set ambitious but realistic sustainability goals um, around sort of environmental goals, energy, water, waste that you're probably familiar with, as well as categories like equitable development and health and well-being. And then through that performance uh, baselining and goal setting, identifying the projects that are most appropriate for those neighborhoods and that are going to support achievement of those goals. And once, once the district has relatively clear priority around what their project interests are, the next step is feasibility, right? And this is really about making the sort of triple bottom line case for why district energy or why building retrofits or why a new park in a neighborhood is the most appropriate investment to support the eco-district goals. And then project development takes a wide range of forms, whether it's a major infrastructure investment or, you know, a program that's led by a neighborhood association, for example. And then district monitoring is really tied back to the assessment process where the district and the city set a performance baseline. So every several years, they can then come back and track the, uh, the impacts that the investments have made. So uh, recognizing that you know this was this was this represented pretty good thinking based on what was out there and the sort of research and leading minds that we were able to bring together, we knew we had to test it. So we identified five pilot districts in Portland. They are all urban renewal areas, but other than that, they're all quite different. And the idea is that we would have five very different models for how you create eco districts. And so I'm going to take you briefly through um, to sort of give you a sense and a flavor of each of these pilot neighborhoods and kind of what's the unique opportunity that's really driving the process in these districts. So the Lloyd District, I don't know if, and may, if I don't know how many of you are familiar with Portland, but so the Lloyd District is on Portland's central east side. It's a kind of mid-rise commercial office district, lots of surface parking lots. And the story here is that the 10 property owners that own about 80% of the land in the district, uh, they, saw, they see eco districts as an opportunity to get ahead of city regulation and actually set requirements on themselves before they anticipate the sort of city or state placing requirements on them. So they see eco districts as a way to sort of get ahead and sort of uh, determine their own fate by kind of setting requirements for themselves. The South of Market Eco District is uh, primarily Portland State University, so major institutionally led project. They own about 50% of the land in the area. And, and for this district, the Eco District really provided an opportunity for this major institution, typically the sort of 800 pound gorilla in the room, to put a hand out to other property owners who, uh, you know, typically when the university comes knocking at their door, the, you know, the joke is they come to sue them or buy their property. And so eco districts, uh, in this case, really provided an opportunity for the university to say, let's think about working together in a different way and think more collaboratively about what we may, might be able to do if we think like a district. And it's provided, it's, it's proved really positive. They now have a bunch of other property owners and stakeholders who are sort of sitting as equal partners with, with the university. The South Waterfront Eco District is our uh, shiny new green neighborhood development. All of the buildings are lead silver, silver or above. And what's interesting here is even though there's a really high performing green building portfolio, the sort of biggest challenge for the district is that it's an entirely new development and so all new people are moving there because they're interested in sustainability and want to be in a green building, but there's no sense of community and no sense of place because it doesn't have any it doesn't have any history and there's sort of no community gathering places. And so, uh, you know, this, this very sort of technically high performing district is really committed to some of the sort of social performance areas and creating sort of a neighborhood brand and identity and, and community gathering places. Our Foster Green Eco District is in outer Southeast Portland. This is our, our largest pilot district. It's highly diverse, primarily residential, low to moderate income. There's about 80 different languages spoken. Many immigrants move to Portland and come to this part of town because it's affordable. And the story here is that all of the eco district decisions are really screened through an equity lens. So any prioritization around, you know, building retrofits or green white green right of way improvements. They're, they're evaluated based on how well they're going to create local jobs, um, provide more of a sense of place and, you know, better pedestrian environment. There's a lot of uh, unpaved streets in the neighborhood. Um, and the, the other, I think, important part of the story is that it's really provided a positive way for a sort of historically challenged neighborhood to organize around something inspiring and exciting. And it's actually our largest and most active of all of our eco-district leadership groups of our steering committees. And then finally, our Gateway Eco District is in outer northeast Portland. It's on the nexus of uh, major freeways and three of our light rail lines. And many folks in Portland don't even know where Gateway is. It's often seen as sort of this pass-through or transitory neighborhood. And so 
again, here, the, the story is that the idea of an eco-district is really about providing a brand and a sense of identity and a place, and actually more than a brand, a destination, and creating sort of a sense of there and a reason for people to come to the neighborhood. And so, you know, an example of one of the projects is a group of High school students are working with local community college students to create a video called Changing the Perception of Gateway, all about how this eco-district is creating sort of a new future for their neighborhood. So that's a, a very brief overview to um, a complicated uh, and long story, but I just wanted to give you a flavor for, um, for our work to frame up the conversation and the exciting projects that you're going to hear about here locally in D.C. <laughs> Thank you.